Hello, hello. Good evening or good morning, wherever you are. I hope you're all doing good. Um, today will be a very short live stream. Um, we will only have like one and a half hours of uh, streaming tonight, um, almost. Because I'm also gonna film an interview tonight um, with a very special guest, so um, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, so we only will have like, yeah, one and a half hours roughly um, until eight. And um, of course we want to continue with our project today, but um, I wanted to um, do something a little bit different today because last time we did a lot of sketching, a lot of drawing and perspective stuff and um, I want to basically show you a little bit every time we stream. So today will be all about painting and also um, because I had the question in the community about the approach on studying mood and studying landscapes, studying environments in digital painting. We will today talk about um, basically on how approach painting studies. I will do a very quick demo. I hope we can proceed as far as we can in one and a half hours. Um, hey, Hannah, how's it going? Good evening. Um, yeah, and we will proceed with that. And uh, I hope that we that I can uh, at least tell everyone as much as I wanted to to about this topic. And we also um, basically do our study for this whole project because we have to study a lot. We studied already architecture. Um, I, all, I also bought a book um, which just came today on architecture. Those type of projects are always pretty cool just on um, just on like getting different reference materials and just reading more stuff, um, which is like, yeah, which is just a normal habit of mine, just getting more books and I just love those well-researched books where you have so much different um, knowledge and information just in a package. Um, so these are very valuable. I bought this on Amazon. It was pretty cheap to get. Um, yeah. So uh, maybe we can wait for just a couple few moments until more people joined and then we start with the live demo. How's everyone doing? Hannah, how are you doing? How was your week? The rest of your week? I hope it was good. I guess you're studying. was okay. I guess very productive seeing it from the Insta story. It was that was really funny by the way. All right, let's just wait for two more minutes and then we should start with the live demo. Ah, okay. Did you present it already, your assignment? <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Um, 
right so um last time when we um when we finished the stream we did our um first study sketches um yes and um in between like in between the last couple of days i just took a little bit of time in between on um, doing more research just on um, writing down more notes for the project so for me really like doing my own project is a very organic process Hey Gabriel, thanks for the like and welcome to the stream. Um, for me, it's a very um, organic process on um, like writing things down and not really to go 100% for one direction because I want to um, leave all the possible opportunities open for me. So that's why I just do research, a little bit of sketching, more research and like I, I stop with researching really on the execution part, which is the last 20 to 30 percent of the project um, yeah and I basically spent um, a little bit of time on Thursday evening um, just on um, reading about different types of architecture because if you maybe you remember from the last stream um, and as Dimitri very funny um, displayed it um, that I was a little bit confused by certain things on the um, middle age architecture so I spent more time on reading about it and I I wanted to find out why they built certain things in different ways. Um, so, like, f so I basically wrote a lot of facts down. Like, um, they used timber frame. Stone was very expensive. Um, the lower area would be a shop area for the profession, which these type of informations already give me different impulses on finding ideas or possible concept ideas. Um, also, they had additional animal animals around for the food um, the upper part was for living it was mostly like sleeping chamber living room um, and the only heatable room was ba basically the living room for guests and what was also a very interesting fact that it was partially forbidden to build things on top of the houses so it was uh, very common for a certain time area that they built just built additional living areas um, on their houses on top but the problem which um, came on later was buildings were very built dangerously close to one, to each, each other so that increased the chance of fire spreading. That's why you have a lot of those um, very tight um, built houses. And also like there are different different um, looks to the houses. So if you if if you look for if you look at English houses from the same time area, um, and compare it to the f f um, to the one from France, they have very certain um, certain habits of building certain stuff. But um, I just I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. Um, this is not what we will do today. We will not continue with the research and uh, with the sketching. Today we will paint um, because I found it very important also to give you guys some certain as um, uh, some different topics like I don't want to do the same stuff every stream so today we will paint um, also as I mentioned I only have like one and a half hours so we will um, do a painting study a painting study but for our project so as I showed it in a previous stream I uh, want to have a certain mood for our environment um, for, the, for the for the final piece which should be a little bit more of a magical mood, um, and for that I looked a lot of looked at a lot of reference, of course. But um, we also need to study them, and um, I maybe not necessarily need to study them, but I found it very important to show you um, how I study them, and maybe that's something which you can also use for you for your project building. Because um, if you're a beginner, you will definitely come to the point that you have the this moment of okay I'm not progressing because I don't know um, how this thing work so I just want to show you how do you basically dissect every problem which you will face on your project and how you approach that so today will be mostly about painting all right um, hey say yeah welcome to the stream uh, I'm good just very very busy today uh, we will also have uh, some filming tonight so we will have a very short stream and i want to make sure that uh, the content i provide tonight is good so um yeah but everything's fine how are you
Hey gold eyes, welcome to the stream. How's it going? By the way, um, let me know how, how the quality is on the stream. Like last time we had some quality issues on YouTube and um, we realized that the, the, the stream is better on Twitch. So if you don't like the quality on, on YouTube, it's just because of it's not um, processed yet on YouTube. So um, feel free to watch it on Twitch then. What are you peeps up to? What are you doing? Hannah is studying. All right. So, um, uh, drawing architects always difficult for me purely because of perspective. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I don't know, Gold Eyes, if you have seen our last live stream, it's uh, on on the YouTube channel. Um, we talk a lot there about perspective, so maybe that's gonna help you. Um, we also drew some architecture. Uh, are you working 70 to 80 hours? Oh, well, um, even more, I would say. Like recently, I work a lot again. Um, but this is just because I want to keep up the content for you. And also, um, yeah, I'm, I'm basically just producing a lot of YouTube content. And also um, now with the new routine that we're gonna stream at least once a week, um, that's just, yeah. On Wednesday I had, technically I was, I was starting um, right before nine on Wednesday with my day job. And uh, we finished stream at almost at midnight and I, barely had a break in between so it was like very full very very full today I'm just chilling um, I'm painting a character design of a made-up ghost hunter who has been through a lot of physical challenges oh that sounds interesting I would like to see a work in progress uh, feel free to post that on the on the um, on the uh, art community if you're not already there all right, um, let's move on. So today's topic is basically painting study. So um, as mentioned, um, we want to, or I want to have a very magical um, environment um, uh, lighting for our final piece. Um, so we, you have to think about that like a sandwich, okay? So we basically um, drawing and designing our design out, which is like the lower part, and then we add all the other stuff on top so the mood and everything else it's basically on top it's like the the, the the i would say it's the icing on the cake so for me like having a nice mood and light sells should sell the story of course the design and the drawing and everything which is inside um, is more important but the mood and the lighting is also very important because it can really sell your story or the situation um, so that means you also have to study that in between if you're not familiar with that. So um, how I would do it, um, also to show it in between, what I like to do on a daily basis, I have a PSD. Um, I will not say <laughs> how I call this piece, this PSD, but um, it's basically me uh, take, taking uh, my photos I took and doing painting studies. And I never spent um, on the environment studies, I never spent more than an hour. Just because if you have something which has a lot of detail, a lot of foliage and everything, you can really lose a lot of time in there. So you, you really need to focus on the necessary parts. And this is something I do on a, on mostly on a daily basis if I really have the time. If I know I have a very full work day, maybe I don't have the time for that. but. Mostly I try to do that in the beginning. And that's something we will do today because I feel like for the most people who want to do environments and want to do illustrations also, um, they also need to understand how to approach that. Um, I did a very ugly and rough sketch in before already. Um, usually I would spend way more time on a sketch, but we don't have much time. We only have like one hour and 20 minutes um, for the stream and for to, to get this thing done. Um, and I also take a lot of notes, um, or I actually did in the past, um, like 
right now, not so, so often because I do it on a daily basis. But if you start with that, it's always good that you take notes before you start painting. Um, just take the image you want to study and write things down you are noticing. So if you do that before, you can keep that in mind while you're painting without like just randomly starting to paint from here and there. And it's really about the approach of understanding. So um, when you look at that, um, what I ask myself first is not about what is the main color or what is um, like what is the like the main the main direction for the painting. For me, it's the first question is um, what type of environment is it? What type of vegetation is it? Where is the region? Is it a very wet environment? Is it a very dry environment? Is it in between? Um, is it night? Is it day? These are those questions you have to ask yourself because all those certain details um, are telling you the behavior of the environment. The next question I ask myself, how is the um, behavior of the light and how is the behavior of the shadows? So as a general thumb rule, I would say um, if you have a very warm light, the shadows are more cool and if you have a more cool, cool, sh uh, cool light, the shadows um, should be a little bit warmer. But this doesn't mean that happens all the time because you can also have a very monochrome light scenario. So when I look for those type of images, I would always go for very natural light. So re really be careful of photo manipulated images and photographs. We had this on the um, art community th this week. We talked about that um, previously. So it's very important that you keep that in mind um, before you decide what type of reference you're gonna take. Um, the, next, the next step is basically looking for light and shadows shapes um, and I say shapes here because when we go over to painting um, I would always recommend that you divide things in certain masses so which are the biggest masses um, and I come to that point later and which are the medium masses and small masses so basically dividing the image in big medium small um, when I started out I started to um, separate everything in foreground midground background that's something you can do but um, when you have like images like this, for example, where you have not a st very strong foreground and more a very strong midground, then you run into trouble of, okay, um, how do I structure that? So um, it helps to decide, okay, which are my biggest masses, which are my medium masses and my smaller masses. Um, also, um, what is very obvious, but also important to, to question yourself, what do you want to study? Because when you look at an image like that, it, it can take you hours to paint that in terms of if you want to make it very detailed. You really have to ask yourself, okay, what is the purpose of the study here? Is the purpose of um, trying to understand how to paint foliage? Is it um, just the, the, the purpose of understanding light? Um, is it uh, the purpose of understanding just painting in general? Do I want to practice my brush strokes? Um, you should answer this question before you start painting so you don't waste too much time because that can really happen. Um, also, uh, what helps is um, if you do stuff like that, if you very, I just did that because if you are very um, on the beginning of your journey and you have trouble with colors and values and everything, um, I would always recommend starting in grayscale, which means not doing that in color. Do that in grayscale first because then you get more of a feeling from um, how values are changing, how contrast is working, um, where is the biggest dark medium, um, uh, dark versus versus light, contrast, etc, etc. So that's very important. Um, if you feel like you want to do that in color, that's totally fine. But what you can also do, like making those little bars where you just um, where you st start to dissect color, like what type of color is in that image you want to study. And that's, that's not bad, you know, that's really um, a good way for you to dissect everything. Mark Twain said it, like if you want to manage complex task, you just have to break it down in small tasks and start with the first one. So that's really um, a very good way of approaching that. And it's nothing bad about it. Um, the next is basically painting what we will do now. And uh, what I just did in the beginning here for you, that's something which I usually don't do, um, is, uh, but I did that in, in the past, is, writing little S and L's in my scene to to just make sure, okay, if I have a very dirty sketch because it's like, there's basically nothing in my sketch because we have a lot of foliage in here. 
and I don't have to draw all that in. Um, but it's here, it's, I just the S stands for shadow and the L stands for light, obviously, just to keep in mind, okay, um, where's the light coming from? That's also something you have to make sense to ask yourself. So we have here a very nice um, a diagonal light coming from behind the midground and a little bit through the uh, tree branches, which creates this very interesting light shapes, those dappled light. Um, and if you start to look at different images, like I, that's something I personally very like is those little light shapes, those dappled light, which coming through. And it also creates a very interesting sense for the scenery. So if you imagine walking through that forest, it will, would have a very magical um, feel. And that's something, that's what we actually want to study. All right, so um, let me just quickly read the chat before we keep on going. Um, just chilling, um, get some snakes. Uh, you mean snacks? Um, ah, you joined Gold Eyes, nice. All right. Um, so let's start with painting. So first, of course, we start with the base. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, um, as I said, start with the biggest masses. So if I would have a piece which basically is a big, um, is a big piece with a lot of sky, I would start with the sky because it's, it takes the most place in the image. If we have something with water, I would start with the water, but here it really doesn't necessarily needs to be anything because it's very dense. All right. Um, so we have different, you, you have different options now, like what you can do, you can start really um, uh, work certain shapes in like step by step. So we could, for example, like work all the browns in, like all the, all the wood stuff. Um, all the trees we could start um, with the ground mass because it's very big um, I wouldn't recommend necessarily to start with all the detail of all the foliage because um, We will not paint all that we will not paint every little dip in here um, I mean if you love painting if you enjoy the process and at the end you just want to do it, that's totally fine You can do that. I'm just saying like we will not do that here today because we want to keep our study efficient because at the end of the study, technically, um, and I hope we have enough time for that, we also need to paint our own image. So we actually need to apply what we just learned on the study. All right, um, so I would uh, really, and also like in terms of brush, brushes, because I get asked a lot, like how do you start with the brush and everything? Um, that really doesn't matter. Um, so we, I start here with the lasso tool, just lassoing in, um, the ground first and we also work with the clipping mask so we just um, filled one layer with the tone and then added the clipping mask um, also uh, I don't know how many of you are using the color wheel I like the color wheel um, it's very helpful because uh, it, it helps you to see the natural way of behavior of color um, if you look for here for example like we have here from um, warm light to cool shadow which means um, and th this is just for the um, vegetation. Um, if we look at the color on the uh, on the color wheel, you see it jumping, and it's basically the range from this green to warm, warmer, warmer light, which means we have basically a range from here to here, from here to here, and that's what we keep in mind. And if I would see the if I would see the ground tone without picking it, I would say. Um, this would be like a range maybe from here to here, so more reds. And also again, it would be a range from here to, re to here. And it is always has the same type of uh, movement inside the color wheel. So if we, for example, let's click here. This is, this is the darkest part here. This is, this is very orangey. And the, the light part here is very red. So we, we, we have a very big range from here to here. So here we always, um, we, we almost have the, the medium parts. And I would say the light looks very, very bright. So something like that. So in the yellows and very bright. Let's pick it. Yeah, that's basically, that's basically almost about what I picked. 
So we have the range from here to here. So, um, and also the movement, just to explain it very quickly, um, as we said, light, the light gets warmer and the shadows gets cooler, which means if we look at the shadows, that this little thing here on the, on the color wheel is basically moving into a more cool direction. So if we would be here, like if the local color is here and it goes cooler, it goes here. And if we have like the, the greens, for example, and they go cooler, they go more into the blue direction which is very helpful and it's the opposite way for the light. So if we have something here, vegetation goes warmer and then go, it goes more into the, in the red direction. So it's, it's basically the same process. All right. And when you, when you block in the stuff, it really doesn't have to be perfect um, because you can paint over it again and again and again. Um, and the more you do it, the better you will get with this. So um, just, I would recommend try to find just a study habit for yourself and um, yeah and just have fun with it so i will stop talking so much right now i just start painting because i see it's almost seven so we have to to push it and also just one recommendation before i stop talking um, we i would always recommend to start with an o opaque brush in the beginning so that like the biggest masses and the color masses they are um, opaque not transparent otherwise the separation of light and dark can be become a little bit too muddy when we don't have a clear separation okay. so we just I just start with one tone not too bright not too light something I personally very like is um, just using one like very few layers just to speed up my process all those little black stuff in here all the all the trees I would do in between um, or actually I would do that later what I would do now is going for the big masses of the foliage so we have the range here from here these are the cool more cools and these are the tones which get more brighter and then we have the very warm light so let's start with with the mid range it's always good and also when you st when you want to paint foliage um, look at the shape of the foliage so um, when you look at those here those little branches and leaves um, like the, the thing is uh, you can get very overwhelmed by all this information you have in here so what we try to do is indicating and what I mean by that is just I look I just look at them as a shape Hey Celine, how's it going? Um, could you share the photo reference to study along? Um, the thing is, I don't know if I can do that because I bought this reference. Um, I bought this reference from a reference pack. Um, and I don't know if that if I am allowed to share that. Um, but I can tell you the reference pack. It's called Ancient Forest and I bought it on Gumroad. I don't want to get in trouble like sharing sharing the stuff without having the license for it. Um, yeah, so um, um, uh, back to my point. So when I look at that, I, I look at the simplification of the shapes. So um, I'm not trying to, to, to paint all that. Like it doesn't make sense to do that because you just kill yourself over it. So um, you could either go for um, for a certain brush like a brush which can help you to just um, emulate this and there are very very a lot of brushes you can really use you can also paint that but then I would um, 
then I would look out for the shape. So I would start with a big mass and then when I start to paint in those little shapes, I would just look at them and see, okay, this seems like a very horizontal shape. So my brush stroke will become more horizontal. So I will make only brush strokes from left to right, not like this, only from left to right. And I just indicate for now. We stay with one tone. Oops, pick the wrong one. So we stay with one tone just to block in shadows and stuff in first. And it really doesn't matter, like if we use a flat bristle or pick brush. I'm just gonna switch the brushes here in between just to show you that it really doesn't matter. Um, or if we're gonna take, a, yeah, if we're gonna take a certain texture brush, that really doesn't matter. We just block it. and I'm just looking at okay where are the shadows like here are shadows here are shadows here are shadows and um, I will look at the sketch and I will look at the um, at the mark making and I'm um, just want to understand the lighting so I know like the light is coming um, from behind this behind this uh, foliage so the light is somewhere up here so um, it is important to, to keep that in mind so we understand, okay, the light is coming from that direction. So my shadows will equally go into a certain direction. So you see the ground shadows here. Um, you see the ground shadows here. So... Hey, warning! Welcome to stream. So you see the you see the cast shadows on the ground, which which means um, these are also indicating the direction of the light. So if you start to paint in the light, for example, it is very easy to just get the understanding for um, for all the shadows. So let's say we just paint in like a little bit of white in here. So it's almost like painting with traditional. So we just add one tone. And we just, I don't know, we just do like a little bit of light shapes here and there and there. And it also helps to zoom, to zoom out um, just to get the understanding for it. And if I know, okay, I have this light coming from here, then I see, okay, all the ground shadows are angled in the same direction. And if I pick, for example, my, my ground tone here, I just go for the half of it. So I know, okay, that will be roughly, will be roughly be um, the shadow side of it. And then I go a little bit cooler because it's, it shadows are more cool. And these are also, I see there's a little bit more green in here in, in the shadow. So it's, I would say it's even, it's, yeah. I go a little bit, I add a little bit of green here and then I just use the smudge tool, mix those colors, pick them again. And then I have almost the tone I wanted to have. And usually the closer the shadows come, the darker they get. And I will not be very precise in the beginning because it just it's just about blocking everything in in the moment. Because when I look at the nice shadow shapes here, I want to capture that later on. Um, but for now, we just want to get in the, the, the broad masses.
We also don't need to commit too much. Just adding just a little bit of light. A little bit of um, different colors of the light. The white was actually a bit too much, but that's okay. We just paint over that. Okay, let's block in that boy here. So it's these three branches here in the foreground, they're way darker. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's go for a different brush. So I'm still not want to render the stuff too much. I just want to give everything I add to the image just one tone, like one local color and one tone, which is about in the in the range of the object or branch or what it is at the moment, you know, just want to add everything. Because um, adding light and shadow, um, we will do at the end, or like when we, have all the stuff we wanted to have in there. And it's actually a very simple way of doing. Let's take the normal round brush. I think it's a little bit better. Yeah, okay. Also, um, for me, painting is also something. It's a little bit like um, sketching to me. So I'm actually painting the way I'm sketching. So very loose. indicating certain stuff seeing all the stab of light here these branches they are brighter because they get hit by the light then we have this nice overlap here so let's do a little bit of the ground stuff I'm sorry if I'm too fast today. Um, just um, want to get as much done for you because we just have a very short stream today. So in the beginning it's really about just indicating stuff. So um, what we can start doing now is um, we could either like um, just try to pick just try to pick the color we want for the shadows or light or either we can do use a linear dodge add layer for the light and a multiply layer for the shadow which is very convenient because if you do that on top it treats everything which is below the same way. So for example um, I have the linear dodge add layer um, and my brush set to linear dodge add and then I see okay um, we have a very warm light inside the environment which means um, I just take a color which is ar around in the in the area I want for light so very warm like this so like when I look at the light it looks yellowish but it has certain reds inside so I don't want to go too yellow so maybe a little bit of orangey to get this uh, magical light and then we go for a very saturated saturated color so almost 100 and a very dark value and then we go with over with this brush and we can now do it just by brushing it in or we can also start to already um, 
draw in the shapes with the lasso tool on top. For example, for the step of light, it would definitely make sense. And you will see it in a moment. So I'm just doing it very quick. Thing is, like, if we would, if we would have a more um, tighter sketch, like this would be easier. So um, I'm here just eyeballing it right now, simultaneously looking at the reference and doing that. And then this stuff here gets hit by the light as well because it comes around. Then we have very nice light shapes on this tree. Have this, which you have, just need to keep in mind where's the direction where the light is coming from. So basically, all that here, I just give it like one big shape, and the tree gets hit by light a little bit here on top as well. So the light comes through, and then we have it. Actually, we have it here also on certain trees in the back, um, but we will not do that for now because it just. Um, those are done. We will do the back um, after we did all the necessary stuff in the midground because the midground is just a bigger focal point here. And then we just also add certain stuff here because it's also in the foreground. We can add a couple of them here. Again, back to the point of uh, the horizontal shape, keeping the overall shape of the branches and uh, the leaves in our head. And just we're just looking for okay, where's the light coming through? Where's the magic happen? You know, like we're looking for the magic here. Also have a little stuff here and just. And what I want is like, I want to capture this light coming through the branches, but also coming around this corner, making its way into the foreground to the lens. And the things I totally understand um, when the when the studies take very long because environment studies can be very daunting. There's just so much stuff happening, and it it really can happen that they take long. Also for me, um, if I haven't studied them before, I also didn't study this type of vegetation before and these type of references. I mean, I did similar images like that, but it's always interesting to. Study those just to improve your sense for light and mood. All right, so now that we basically um, uh, uh, lassoed out all the shapes, now we have our brush and I press Ctrl H to not show the selection and then I make the brush very big and now I just go with one single stroke of it, boom, and there comes the magic light. But we have to be careful that it's not going to be too strong. So we want to keep an eye uh, to to keep in mind that we don't push it too far because then we have to paint over it again later on. But you see already here on the tree. It's nice oranges coming through and the, the light shape I uh, the light shapes I created they look not very nice very basic right but we can paint over that anyways and just keep in mind that it's not too strong but we can also check grayscale just to see how strong the values are so we have to be careful with this all right and looks good for the beginning 
Um, so now we'll take, for example, the smudge tool, like just brushing over it a little bit so we get those hard edges away. And this is just here our base block and our base information. So we have basically all the light here on one layer. So now that we have done that, we also need to do that for the shadows. So now we take, I will take a medium gray um, to make sure that it's a cool shadow that we create. Um, again, we take the lasso tool again. And now everywhere where we drew S, a shadow we can do this and to see like that we're gonna push also occlusion shadows of plants and everything just yeah I do that very rough but it doesn't matter it's my study I can do what I want also like uh, looking at the cast shadow or like looking at the shadow parts of the tree we include that as well so the tree is mostly in shadows so it will be darker anyways same goes for here also um, I mean that's we keep that up for later so we're gonna do that as well here and we're gonna have some Interesting shadow shapes in the foreground. Again, control H. Now we add a little bit of a shadow. And we basically want to push the values. And always keep in mind, everything is um, radi radiating, like light is radiating, shadows is radiating. Um, hey, hey, Evil Orb, thanks for the follow and welcome to the uh, Twitch stream. Um, on the way, your color is so helpful. I'm definitely gonna try working like this. Oh my god, oh my god, lol. <laughs> um, it's interesting to see how you tackle this from the rough stretch. I would have started grouping in value only. Um, yeah, you can do that, but it also costs time, you know. Um, so it's it's the we uh, we do the very fast, quick approach today, which means that's the approach I would do if I do it on my daily routine. Because what I want at the end of the stream um, for you is that you find a way that you can bring in those environmental studies, those mood studies into your daily routine that's very important and um, digital painting takes time and also understanding that and learning light and shadows and everything so i thought like it makes sense to just give you guys my um, fastest and most logical way of approaching that um, it looks it can look messy in the beginning but you have all the freedom you want you can block in everything you want like you wanted to and what we can do now, basically, after we did that, we will group that, merge that, and just paint on top. So, um, what I want to give you here as the most, uh, in most important information is um, dissecting shadows and light. And um, I would always put the light over the, over the shadows, not under the shadows. Just my personal stuff, my personal um, preference. And from this point on, I mean, if you zoom out, um, our our image looks a bit too saturated. Just um, just if we look at that now, and it's, it's of course not very far. But um, what I would always try to construct in the beginning is just the overall color direction, light direction, and shadow direction. If you have these three components, then at the end you will always get to the to the finishing line um, and I wish I would uh, I wish I would take a different 
stream for that maybe we can do that on the next stream also again if that really interests you um, but today I'm just a little bit um, low on time because of the interview for the channel um, but I thought like it's more interesting um, to see and also here what you can do in between is just taking the sketch away um, that's also something which you d which I will always do at a certain point just taking the sketch away and then we just focus on a painting we can actually lower the opacity of the sketch a little bit um, just to not get distracted by all the blacks and stuff and now that we have that um, that's something I always do is just taking everything control G duplicate it Ooh. duplicate it merge the guy so everything is on one layer and that just speeds up the process and we also have a backup so now it's just like what I would do now is just experimenting with um, experimenting with different brushes brush strokes trying to emulate the environment is it working ah oh, no okay just trying different brushes, um, trying to how can I re reproduce the the this type of texture of the foliage through certain brush strokes um, and just indicating that. So we need to paint out the whites a little bit because it's a bit too strong and usually I would keep adding the whites um, for later stages but now I can really lay back and just um, let my mind going free without thinking too much I see the tree is a little bit too brown we need a little bit more green in there what we can do also we can add a, a soft light layer on top taking green and just going over the tree we have to keep in mind it's not going too dark I'm really jumping all around at this point really oh that's the wrong layer Just jumping around. It's a bit too bright, it's a bit darker. That's better. Don't be afraid to to kill your darling to to just add stuff on top because it's a study you can do whatever you want if you want to paint it on top it's, it's your decision um, do whatever you want also experiment I mean I don't say like my way is the way because there are different really a lot of different ways on approaching that stuff I have a certain brush I always use for that. That's that thing. No, it's not this guy. You can also flip this, flip this boy. <coughs> and I like to approach really my studies um, as I would paint with gouache. Um, and if you're familiar with gouache, it's complete op opaque medium. So I'm not um, I'm not mixing up all my um, colors too much. It's just about trying, almost getting graphical stuff inside.
So again, we need to paint out the whites a little bit because we have to be careful with this in the beginning. Hey, hey, Broadmon Slayer, welcome to the Twitch stream and thanks for the follow. Now we can really um, the, the chill thing about that if you establish light and shadows right in the beginning. You don't have to think about anything anymore. You can really just pick up, pick up the the informations you already um, added to the image. And now it's a really now it's really a time thing. Of course, the more complex the image is, the longer it takes. And usually, like foliage and everything takes really long. Um, but if you start on um, if you start on just indicating the stuff, so you not. Your goal is not to necessarily um, to paint every little thing inside. And also, the question is also like, why would you do that? To to um, what is the purpose of that? You know, because nobody wants to waste their time, right? It's really on. Um, it's really on just understanding. What you can also do is you can also write down things you learn. So, let's say you just learned. Okay, I understood how to paint foliage. Like which brush? Write down the brush. Um, which which brush stroke you use? Like where's the direction your strokes coming from? Um, if that's helping you, just do that. Don't shy away from that stuff. And ha the most important thing is have fun with it. Just like. Be Bob Ross, you know? Every tree needs a friend. <laughs> now just have fun with this stuff. Don't stress yourself with making a nice image, just brush in the information, try to understand it, try to learn from it. If you peeps are interested in that, furthermore, I can we can continue with this on the next stream um, because I don't know how long the interview gonna take tonight. Um, so maybe I don't know. Maybe we can continue with that later on t tonight. It really depends on how long the how long the interview will go. But just as I mentioned, I want to keep an interesting stream for you. So it's not always the same. Also look out for edges. Like um, when I look at this part here, I'm looking like, okay, how's this edge behaving? Of course, like there's no really hard edge. Like everything is bro broken because there are mostly little branches and leaves and stuff. And this part here is very dense, so we have a lot of information here, but also light is coming through. So it's interesting that we have this little light information here. So what we can do, we just take a little bit of what we already established and just, just add it here on top. And we can basically stay on one layer. And we also stay zoomed out very much. Add a little bit more info to the back here. Still doing just brush strokes from left to right be because we know okay there are branches and they have a certain shape. So we just indicating this. And you see I never really finish everything. I just 
I, I, I work where my brush is going. So we worked on the branches. Now I have here those interesting shapes from the from the tree branches hanging around. So work a little bit on this. And don't let yourself really getting overwhelmed with this stuff. It's really about understanding and having fun with that. Our piece is very saturated. Um, so what we could do, we could now desaturate a little bit. Um, but I would wait with that also a little bit longer just to to not lose color ri richness too much because it's, we don't want to copy it one to one we want to understand and learn from it because we want to understand here how to create this magical light what is what is basically making this magical light in this from this fo uh, forest reference also when you add shadows never go too black and too desaturated with the shadows um, that's just from my personal experience. It makes sense to keep a little bit of color richness inside the shadows Let's um, flip that again uh, duh, 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 duh. Hey Barudia, welcome to the stream. I'm good. How are you? Hey Sebastian, how's it going? Hey everyone Hey everyone else who joined the stream Oh, we have 11 we have 11 viewers but um, on my interface is just showing three people on YouTube and two on Twitch maybe it's wrong I'm doing great, was drawing all day and I realized that I have a lot to learn so I'm hyped about also scared. <laughs> but that's the best feeling. You will never have that again. At least in, in, in this field. a little bit bigger here it's just about indicating just indicating now we soften it up with the um, with the smudge tool it's more important that it reads from far and that's why we still work out uh, work on it very um, zoomed out so seeing here, here's a lot of stuff happening in front of that tree. So I think the tree is still not, not the perfect color. So the value seems to be right. Um, I think it's a little bit more desaturated still. But again, I don't want to lose all the color richness. Go a little bit darker. Also what is interesting, um, what I noticed like at work I do a lot of stylized work so um, I go for more vibrancy and more um, saturation and colors for our game title and um, when I do those studies I always tend to use more colors now, more saturation just because of, um, just because of my job, just because of doing that every day. Which is not bad. 
It's just I have to keep it in mind. What is interesting here is that this this part is leading into the image, so we can can use that. Like branch is always very nice, very interesting. And like um, also what is interesting here that we have a lot of different type of branches going over this tree bark in the back. So we can use that to hide a lot of information. Um, which 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 brush we're gonna use for this? So of course I want to save time here. So I'm, it would make sense. It would make sense to use a brush which emulates a little bit the shapes of the branches in the back. Also need to add a little bit more shadows um, under them. So we'll take my global tree brush just to save time. So I take this color, take a little bit of dark here, and just add this on top. Again, we just pick from our more image but again be careful that you don't use those um, because this is a brush which is not opaque so transparency is to pen pressure which means we have to be careful otherwise like a lot of parts can get too soft and that what we don't want because then we have to paint it again back in But overall, in, in terms of um, values, when you see the um, difference here now, what I just did is I just um, add a little bit more of darker tone, just to increase the re readability and also, um, yeah, to make sure that it looks right. But also, uh, that's a, another point of understanding: like dark versus light contrast. I mean, at the end, you could paint everything with one single brush. Yeah. I like this brush, for example. It's, it's, it's just a uh, hard round brush, which is just squeezed. So it has this elongated shape. And it's opaque. It's for patient people. <laughs> We can also start to add a little bit of these branches in the back here. Just staying with one tone would make sense, definitely. Because there's also a lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff is also disappearing, so there's a lot of information happening here. I would actually wait with that until the end. Because we can blur that out, because it's very far in the back, so it's not very necessary. But what should be important is that we add light to this here. So we can we can again use our uh, linear dodge layer. And then we just and it's a bit too saturated. switch it to the opaque brush but then we have to be very careful we can 
desaturate the light a little bit so it becomes a bit more white. Like it is here. And this is really a very traditional approach of, I would say. Um, and I like this, um, I like this traditional approach because it's just, yeah, it's, um, it just feels, it's just more fun, personally. Just like it, it's more, more interesting. Sorry, I'm, at the moment I'm very bad with talking and painting. I just want to keep uh, an eye on the, on the timing. Because the stream will end already at 8. Um, and I'm sorry if there was a very short stream today, only only two hour stream, but um, we're gonna, f uh, gonna record an interview with a really interesting and nice character artist for the channel. And I will um, keep it open if I will come back tonight or next uh, or another day let's check that okay so we push the light even further we can also start to do a little bit of simple strokes here in the back and also a little bit of light here and we're just looking for magic here, yeah, like, okay. What we learned here is that the magic in this image, on the reference image, is created by certain things, which are the warm light hitting the relatively cool vegetation and also the dabbled light. So it's the angle of light, it's the time, so the golden hour. And it's the combination of color harmony, angle, light, and contrast. And sometimes when I do those type of quick uh, studies, I really lose myself into it, which is just out of pure joy of painting. Because it's just so much fun. And I have tons of these, which I never shown anyone, just for myself. And when you do this and as a routine, like every day, just for an hour as a warm up, you will get so good with this and so efficient. And sometimes you learn, you don't realize how much you actually learn. And I felt like also those type of things told me so much about um, painting in general. Like the better I got painting environments, the better I got painting faces and painting skin tone because I felt like, okay, uh, painting skin tone or painting a face is way easier than painting an environment which has so much stuff to do. But I think that's also, it, it really depends on, on, um, on the person. So I would not necessarily to, t to say like, okay, generally it's easier. I think it really has to do with experience and approach and like how complex is the thing you study. information we have on the on the light on the branches um, just hiding information things we don't need necessarily to paint um, let me read the chat doot, 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 doot. 
uh, I will struggle trying to show distance when it comes to color. Um, distance, you mean um, uh, depth in perspective. Yeah, so um, mostly it is just um, water particles in the air, which means just take a very light desaturated blue and just um, brush over it with a very soft brush, just very gently and slowly, not too strong. And you will see like it automatically helps to do that. Um, any tips for someone who signed up for the storm course and it's feeling un and is feeling unprepared? First of all, hey, do you, hey, do you want a little want a deal? <laughs> hey, do you want a deal um, to the stream? Um, can you can you elaborate a little bit on your question? What class are you take? So it's maybe easier for me to answer. Um, it is so fun studying along. Like it a lot that. Oh, sorry, sorry guys, I'm so bad with reading today. Like it a lot that you are streaming more often lately. Thank you very much. I just try to keep up a schedule um, so I can uh, keep your people entertaining and you are learning. Uh, you are learning something. Oh man, um, my talking is so bad today. <laughs> um, people are hard bc they are so familiar to us everyone can no notice easily if it's off yeah yeah absolutely um i totally understand that and i think it's you should never you should never feel judged by um what people are thinking of your stuff because why becoming an artist then anyways you know like it doesn't make any sense then like why you just do it for yourself not for everybody else but that's also something you have to learn because we live in this time where everybody's sharing their work everybody's doing instagram and all that stuff um i'm also like i went away from doing to posting so much because it, it's not only time but it's also um just like little stress you have like you have to do something you have to do work in show because to be honest i do i produce so much work over the day but i don't want to show all that i don't want to show every little sketch i don't want to show i don't know and if i feel comfortable or not about what i'm producing i mean i don't care i just produce because i wanted to make the stuff and i really don't care if i get 50 likes 100 likes or whatever you know so um, that's why I stopped also posting, which is maybe not so smart for my algorithm, but anyways, who cares? Um, but I totally understand you. Brain Dead Starcraft? That's a nice name. Do you play Starcraft? I also play Starcraft. What race do you play? Um, June and Storm Course Fantasy Landscape. Ooh! I wanted to take that class away uh, as well. Also, like. I saw that um, re registration is open and I really would love to take a class just to learn but I'm so freaking busy at the moment with all the other stuff and I'm just anxious that if I take a brainstorm class that I get overwhelmed by everything again so um, I decided not to. Um, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, what I would do to... Um, I would say it's an environment class, right? So do stuff like this, um, do stuff like that. Just do do basic uh, environment studies. Um, so start to sketch environments, um, compositions, um, do quick studies, do longer studies, um, practice painting, uh, practice painting light, certain light situations. So I think his class will be about painting, obviously environments, but um, certain type of magical and different types of lighting um, to really fit that fantasy stuff and also drawing you should always practice drawing every day because drawing is so freaking hard um, and it's such a base skill you really need um, yeah that's what I would say um, you play Zerk nice um, but I'm not so good anymore. I haven't played it so much many years. Ah, I get the struggle. Also, StarCraft is changing so much. Like if you compare it to um, if you compare it to Wings of Liberty and like how it evolved, it became so faster. Also, like I played it once and I played. 
in in uh, Wings of Liberty, I was in in Master, in one on one, and then uh, in Legacy of the Void, I played one uh, one one on ones for a couple times, and most of the people they were like Master, so they were super fast. Like I was like, okay, 300 APM is the new diamond now, um, so it was really crazy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I was always, uh, I'm always loving to hear that that my videos are appreciated. I spend so much time making those, and um, the algorithm on YouTube is not treating me so well. So um, I'm so happy to hear that. Thanks a lot. Dishonor two. You know what? I think I didn't play Dishonor two. I played Dishonor one. It was really good. <laughs> Wings of Liberty was glory days, absolutely, and it was so much slower. Like the game would start after 20 minutes or something, and now it starts like directly. Okay, let me continue with this a little bit. Um, and um, yeah, maybe I don't know, Celine. Uh, should we? Do you feel it? Um, would you feel it interesting to to work on that? To me to work on that further, on a different on a different stream. Because I feel like um, I um, pressed so much information in today in a very short amount of time, and I'm a little bit afraid that you maybe did not get the things I wanted to communicate to you. I mean, for me, it's really no problem at all to paint more of those type of things here. Um, and I think also, also, it would be nice to show to people um, like how far we can push that. But it's also really like about learning. So um, yeah, just let me know. Maybe we can do the next stream also about this, and then we just continue this, and then. Continue with the design stuff on the stream after. Okay, for the background, for example, I would just sketch in like the shapes again for the leaves and also for the negative shapes so for the darker parts and then I would just go over it again with a with a smudge tool my nice I have one brush which I use for foliage because it has a very nice shape um, to make the foliage but I don't know where I have it it just speeds up the process a little bit but if I can find it At the end it really doesn't matter which brush you take, you can basically paint the stuff with every brush, it really doesn't matter. You see me also here switching brushes in between. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. The only important thing is really the edge control and like understanding the different type of edges.
always thinking on um, when I add light and everything. Um, I try to imagine myself how I would add um, a color traditionally to this. So um, like I said in the beginning, I um, depict myself on painting with gouache, which is a ve very opaque medium. Um, that really helps to just take a certain color in between to, to, um, to not lose sight of that. So when I look at this here, zoom in a bit. Um, the interesting part here is that we have this fairly warm light, but right next to the um, to the light shape, um, where it transitioned it into shadows, we have on one side um, where the light is directly hitting, the the ground becomes warmer, and here the ground becomes uh, cooler, so it's it seems to be a little bit more, it, a little bit more, um, uh, how do you say, a little bit more just cooler in in tones, so it's more desaturated, and that can be out of different reasons. So it could either be atmosphere atmosphere over it, so um, wet particles, or it could be that it's because of the um, the light is coming through the tree branches to the through the greens which are automatically desaturate the light a bit or it can also be that there can be I don't know maybe a river um, somewhere in the, in the in the forest in the back which we don't see um, so there can be very different type of reasons for that do we necessarily need to know that to paint a successful image not really but it's very interesting to observe Um, uh, but it's not bad and I'm just walking around trying screenshots because of the beautiful environments. Yeah, the environments were really nice. Um, but I th I'm not sure if I played Dishonored 2 or 1, but it was absolutely beautiful. Um, You would like to see how to turn that into a concept for my own. So basically to turn that into an image for myself, okay? Um, you use the same for brush for everything, that's the way. Um, do you play any other games like League or Warcraft? Um, I'm, I used to play World of Warcraft, um, but uh, it's just so time consuming, so I just stopped that. That's nothing I can do in my schedule. Um, I was also playing Warcraft 3, like um, RTS, um, but mostly StarCraft, um, to be honest. I also played League, but it's also years, um, like, like I don't know, six years, uh, in the past six years or something. Not very recently. Like the 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 more. The more work, it feels like I get more and more work to do over the years, so um, it's, uh, I, I have to make the decision, you know, and it's just like, I just want to work on my own stuff in my free time, so. But sometimes I miss playing games, definitely. What I also do sometimes, I play, um, what's it called, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I just started that. Um, just because I'm, I'm an Assassin's Creed fan and I just like how they, um, I just love it to walk through uh, old cities and I'm interested in how they, how they uh, like build those cities based on references just to see how they execute it. Um, or I play, um, what's that pirate game with my brother? Um, sea of Thieves, that's also pretty fun. What are you playing?
Uh, and Celine, <coughs> to to your point, um, so I could stop painting on that technically and paint now my own image. Um, but let's push this image a little bit further, um, also on the next stream. So um, I just decided, okay, we will do that on the next stream. And then when we finish this, um, we will write down all the notes, everything we learned, and then we um, make our own image. Okay? Um, <clears throat> I'm just playing a little bit of StarCraft 2, getting beat up now, so we play League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand that. I've been there as well. Also, StarCraft is nothing you can really just play on off. You just either play StarCraft or you don't. So now it's really detailing here, detailing more in the foreground. So looking for the selling point here, like what could be our selling point is basically, let's say the, the this area here where the light's coming around. And it could be here, this little tree branches. Let's detail our focal points out. Also make sure to, to paint in negative spaces. So sh the, the, the spaces in between the branches. and everything which is like it has a lot of vegetation it's just so satisfying <laughs> <coughs> that we keep an eye on the on the on the shapes and everything so between turn it to grayscale just to see okay is the our contrast is too strong or not and yeah we have here a little bit too much going on so we just paint that out and decrease that a little bit which is fine We still stay out very far because we really don't need to go in so close. Is 
Celine, by the way, did you found the reference images? I'm sorry. Um, if I can't share it. Just don't want to get in any trouble. Hey STM, welcome to the stream. Um, what do I mainly focus on with this study? Sorry, just joined in case you already explained. Um, so we, um, or I just uh, focus on the mood, on the light. So to understand how to create magical light um, later on for our own um, final image. We s we um, working on a fantasy project at the moment, so we do um, sketching and design drawings and we do also painting so um, and uh, it's it's a part of the process like I want to show um, the community our art community um, I want to show them um, what is what are the different um, uh, roadblocks you can have and things you have to do to learn and understand certain things like understanding light understanding mood understanding color understanding design and everything um, and also just having fun with it so um, today's uh, live stream was uh, all about um, like just doing a study but also learning from the study and how to approach that and I just shared my um, approach but this uh, video will stay on YouTube so if you re want to rewatch it um, you can definitely do that Sounds good? Great. Happy to hear that. Um, I've been so unfocused this week. It's getting on my nerves. So I'm basically gonna do all nighters to finish my brain some homework off. Jesus, Celine. Don't stress yourself too much with that stuff. I know it's, uh, it's, it's hot time for you at the moment, but don't kill yourself. Because if you kill you one day, you can't work on the next day. All right, everyone. Um, I know it, this was a very short stream today, only um, roughly two hours, but um, we need to we need to end the stream now. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I can come back tonight. Um, otherwise, we will uh, stream again on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening. And um, yeah, uh, I hope you like that uh, very compressed format today so I was um, talking a lot and very fast which is usually not my way of doing it um, I will now film an interview with a very nice character designer um, for our for the YouTube channel for more content for you peeps so um, yeah feel free to feel free to uh, to tune in next time for the next stream we will continue painting this and then we will also move on to um, applying what we just learned and um, then we move on to design etc etc um, that sounds awesome definitely rewatch again great have a good one you too gold eyes um, thanks for the demo it was very helpful and informative your explanation on how you go about color shadows light it helped me a lot that's great to hear Hannah thank you so much um, I am uh, really helpful uh, very happy that it was helpful um, I was just afraid that it was too fast and too 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 pushed and too compressed in in this short amount of time. And next time we will definitely spend more time. And if I come back um, tonight, which I'm really not sure about, um, I will let you know. So um, either way, I wish you all a wonderful evening, a wonderful night, and uh, if we will see us soon on the next stream. <laughs> yeah, I keep it secret, Celine. Don't stress yourself too much, Celine, okay? 
So have a good one everyone. Ciao ciao.